Kim really was the person who pulled me in to this wonderful world and this wonderful community. Um, so tonight is my honor to be here. This first poem is, so in the Japanese community, we often identify ourselves by generation. So Issei's first generation, Nisei's second, Sansei's third, Yonsei is fourth, and Gosei is fifth. In my life, I have only ever met two other Gosei identifying folks, and this poem is titled Gosei. Now, three? You're a Gosei as well? Oh my gosh, another one. Okay, chasing. Tattered tails of kimono silk, the crisp bow of an obi, a language that fell from our mouths as bombs fell like rain over Hiroshima. Whiteness, did we quench your thirst? Our ashes glaze your teacups. Moans steep in a dashi brood from flakes of crackling skin. Excavating, a kanji inscribed inheritance, my grandfather's size weeds of internment camp dust. Slivers of polished sea glass roll from shore to shore in a sea of tears. I told Kim one time, I always cry whenever I read what's wrong with me. I, yes, and she said, if you're not crying, you're not doing it right, so. This next poem is called Lessons in Time. Seasons speak in rhythmic tongues. I learned to tell time in cherry blossom dusted pavement, Irish blooms, arms itchy from raspberry bushes, sun baked strawberries between fingertips, matsu trimmings, slurps of beach shucked oysters. These words interpreting Earth's breath, studied, memorized, idolized between blurred pages of Japanese and American. Reconciling. Not all clocks were wound by trusted hands. Not all accents are created equal. Not all typography is up for interpretation. <laughs> Janice, the, the incredible woman who read first this evening, mentioned that we connected after I had a little bit of an experience. And that experience was um, being on the receiving end of a racially motivated hate crime in San Francisco. And the first time I ever was at an open mic and when Kim said, your name will be on that list, and I said, okay. Um, this was the poem that I read. And it was incredibly, it was the first moment that I put together how poetry can be healing. And um, through sharing this poem, um, I've really come to know that it's not only about healing oneself, but how it can be such a healing vehicle for others. So this poem is called Juice. Words weep, connecting pen to paper, to calloused palms of cane, to cries for home out a boxcar window, to barbed wire dragging Jap blood from streets. Rid them from growing our food, everything they touch turns to ash. Rid them from teaching our kids they're planting maggots in their brains. Rid them from the laundromat on the corner, they've picked coins from my pants pocket. Rid them from the corner store, I've had my eye on that lot for a decade. Rid them from the house next door, neighborly doesn't look like. Slit eyes, buck teeth, rabid scowl, jet black hair, pincers for fingers. Dr. Seuss told me so. When cracking their heads like pomegranates, pulp spatters on pavement, we go giddy. Slurp the tartness flooding streets, hand our sons and daughters silly straws so they too can taste it, engorge our bellies until we're drunk off it. Eyes rolled back, chins dripping, arms undulating with glee, we will dance to a star-spangled night only made for this America in red juice, knee deep. Woo. Woo. 
This next poem is a little bit about borders. It's called How Borders Are Made. They partition artifacts. Mother from tongue, soul from desert ashes, creation stories from lips softened by petals of rain, until border crossings become illegal. Unraveled threads never quite find themselves rewoven. Locks rattle in a sympathetic breeze, sacrifice, some call it, cowardice, some say, martyrdom, some question. A metal wire partition drawn with a drunk sculptor's spectacles severs consistently. Blood spatter clogs his lenses as he marvels. Flesh doesn't cut as clean as clay. I have a saying that this is that deep breath poetry. So we can all take a deep breath and do a deep exhale together. I will, we'll go to a bit of a funny one. So this is, we're doing a sharp left turn with no turn signal to my dating life. <laughs> this was last year. If you are a close friend, you have heard about this story many a time. And this is called More Than Just Human. Also, I met this person on a dating app. So the wonderful world that we're in, <laughs> more than just human. To my date, who says there's only one race, the human race, and cultural pride is a toxin on this earth. <laughs> Preach. <clears throat> just wait, just wait, brace yourself. The man who prioritizes racial identity eighth or tenth behind human, vegan, dog lover. <laughs> and hip hop fan. <laughs> Under what rock are you living? Do you not see the shades of bodies slain in these streets? Your skin is of toasted coconut, hair black as midnight, eyes glisten like your father's who came here to escape a war pummeling his country that spattered his likeness across screens, then the walls of the tea shop next door. In the plaza, he learned to ride a bike in the market stall, your grandmother's hands plucked dates and grapes and cucumbers for his lunch. Her eardrums permanently ring from the bombs that seared them, craving nothing more than the chirps of canaries once again. So now I ask, who maimed you? How did it happen? Was it boys who pummeled your face with grimaces at recess or girls who wouldn't dance with you because your skin color clashed with their prom dress? Did the media consume you until you pander to voices that can't even pronounce your name? My heart aches for you, for your future children who will one day look up at you over a bowl of grapes Eyes glistening, canaries chirping, bombs rattling in their blood, and ask, Dad, who am I? I beg of you, answer more than just human. I'm going to end with a, a short, short, short poem inspired by uh, a trip that my family took. Long story made very brief. Uh, we connected with relatives that we had lost contact with due to the war and the various ramifications of that. Um, and we went to visit them this last year. Um, and this poem is about standing in the temple that I found out my great grandfather built that's still somehow connected to our family. Um, and it's titled Blood Wisdom, and it'll be the last poem I read this evening. Ancestral songs chant the walls down, point us in the direction of creation stories that tilled this earth tender before you were born, passed down from hands to hands to hands to hands to wombs to glimmers on distant horizon. This glow hums in our marrow, nourishes souls and whispers, this, this was made for you. Mm.